Did the Bible copy the Enuma Elish? Throughout the Bible, there are many mentions of other gods who tempt and sway the children of Israel away from the God of Israel. In this continuing series, Gods of the Bible, we will go over who these gods are, where these gods come from, and how these gods affect the Bible. Previously, we went over the last part of the Enuma Elish, and the internal inconsistencies that are presented in the Enuma Elish with Marduk's creation of the earth and humans. The Enuma Elish vs. The Bible The Enuma Elish is the Babylonian epic story of creation and the rise of the Babylonian god Marduk as the king of the earth. The Enuma Elish plays an important role in the Bible through the actions of the Babylonian conquest of ancient Israel and the destruction of the temple. With the destruction of King Solomon's temple, the Ark of the Covenant was lost, and the ancient Israelites were taken away during the time of Babylonian captivity. Having gone through the entire Enuma Elise, we can compare the creation story of the earth and mankind to the Bible. We can also begin to compare and contrast the two. To better understand the Bible and its relations to the Enuma Elise, we have to first understand Babylon. Babylon is an ancient city located in modern-day Iraq, and the seat of power of the ancient Babylonian Empire. The ancient Babylonians are a part of the greater group of people that make up the greater Mesopotamian peoples. Despite Babylon creating an empire and having ultimate control over the Mesopotamian peoples, that was not always the case. For the vast majority of Babylonian early history, Babylon was a small and insignificant city being too small to be a proper city-state power, but too large to be considered a village. For most of its history, Babylon was under the control of greater and older Mesopotamian powers such as the Sumerians and Akkadians. From Sumer, Babylon was influenced in its religion and its culture. Babylon was greatly influenced by the Sumerian creation story and the Sumerian gods. This influence was so great that even the patron god of Babylon finds his origins from the Sumerian god Enke. In fact, the Enuma Elish directly takes other older and more established Mesopotamian creation stories and Frankensteins them into what is now known as the Enuma Elish. This is best seen with the creation of mankind where there are three different versions of the same event spanning from the original Sumerian story to the more radical divergent story of events. With a better understanding of Babylon and how Babylon was influenced by its older and oftentimes ruling neighbors, we can now have a better understanding of the context that the Enuma Elish was written. To better understand the Bible, we must first understand the context in which the Bible was written. The compilation of the Bible was created during the Council of Nicaea. The Council of Nicaea was convened by the Roman Emperor Constantine in 325 AD. This would mean that the Bible that we have today did not exist in a complete form until nearly 300 years after the death of Jesus. Despite the Bible being compiled in 325 AD, the written books that would make up the Bible were written much earlier. However, the Roman books of the Bible are still relatively new compared to the written accounts of Greater Mesopotamia. The reason for this is due to the oral transmission of the stories of the Bible. The ancient Israelites never had a need to write down their stories, and the stories of the Old Testament were orally transmitted from one generation to the next. However, this changed with a major event in ancient Jewish history. When the Babylonian Empire sieged Jerusalem and the Temple of Solomon was destroyed and the Ark of the Covenant lost, the ancient Jewish people were in danger of losing their identity. The issue was made worse due to a large number of their population being held in captivity in Babylon from which we get the story of Daniel. With the destruction of the Temple and the means to commune with God being lost with the Ark of the Covenant, and the Jewish people being held as captives in Babylon, there was a real danger that the Jewish people would cease to exist as a distinct people. Because of this risk, the ancient Israelites began to write their stories down. These stories would eventually become the books that would be made up into the Old Testament. 
Due to the oral transmission of the stories that would make up the Bible, the actual books that would make up the Bible came about much later than other creation myths in their written form. The physical writings of the Bible and the physical writing of the Enuma Elish happened within a few hundred years of each other. The relatively short time between the written creation of the Enuma Elish and the writing down of the oral stories of the Bible being created so close in time, we can now compare the two stories. The Enuma Elish is straightforward about the events leading to the creation of the earth. In the Enuma Elish, the primordial god Apsu and his consort Tiamat existed as great bodies of water with nothing else in existence. The heavens were only created due to the actions of Marduk, using the corpse of Tiamat, the primordial goddess, to create the heavens and the earth. What is interesting is that the Babylonian myth is very clear that they are only really talking about the creation of Babylon and the immediate surrounding area. This is evident due to the different body parts of Tiamat creating the natural environment immediately surrounding Babylon. This is best seen with the eye sockets of Tiamat and the blood flowing through them being the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. This theme is continued with Tima's chest forming the mountains and stomach forming the sky. What is rather shocking is just how small the earth is when taking into account what is actually being done in the Enuma Elise. This morbid use of the primordial beings being used to create abodes does not stop with just Tima. Apsu was also murdered by Murdoch's father, Enke, and Apsu's course was used as the home of Enke. Compare the creation of the earth in the Enuma Elise versus the story of Genesis. In Genesis, God speaks creation into being, and the act of the speaking creation into being is grand. It is clear that in the Bible, God is creating something much larger than just Babylon, like what is implied by the Enuma Elise. Genesis does not make use of the corpse of the gods, nor does Genesis need the death of a god to create the earth. With the death of a god, this brings into light another significant difference between the Bible and the Enuma Elise. In the Enuma Elise, the gods are born, are raised, and die. The God of Israel is not born, is not raised, and therefore cannot die. The theme of God's dying is continued in the Enuma Elise with the creation of humans. In the Enuma Elise, depending on the version in which is being read, the gods sacrifice an evil god. The blood of the sacrificed god is then mixed with the earth and it creates humans. Compared to the Bible, there is a significant difference. In the Bible, there is a dual creation of mankind. God creates man and woman and gives his first command to humans, which is to be fruitful and multiply. The second creation of man comes with the creation of Adam. The second creation of man begins with the God making Adam from the dust of the earth. But what is unique is that God breathed the breath of life into Adam, which makes Adam unique. What is interesting about God giving Adam the breath of life is that that breath has been synonymous with spirits. And with the second creation of man, God is giving Adam a spirit or soul. With the creation of Adam, Mankind is created not through the blood of a fallen god, but through the giving mankind a soul. This distinction is clear when looking at the afterlives of Babylonian myth and the Bible. The Enuma Elise is vague about the afterlife of humanity, but through sources outside the Enuma Elise, we know that Marduk did not create an afterlife for his believers. Although Marduk does create an underworld, there is no distinction between believers and sinners. All souls will go to a dark cave where they would be shades and shadows. They will lose their memories and become weak shades of their former selves. Although this afterlife is similar to the Old Testament idea of Sheol, there are several key differences. Sheol in the Bible was a place of holding of souls before the time of final judgment. The Bible has four afterlives. Sheol, the place of holding before the time of final judgment, Gehenna, the place of holding for the wicked souls, which is the pit of fire in the Old Testament, heaven, which is the place of final rest for the righteous souls, and hell, which was the place of final punishment after the time of final judgment. 
The major differences between the Babylonian afterlife and that of Shoal is that Shoal was always meant to be temporary. Although Shoal is described as a place without light, effectively being a gray world without the light of God, Shoal was temporary and ultimately made unnecessary due to the actions of Jesus in the New Testament. Despite how close the Enuma Elish and the Bible are in written form, and the fact that they began to be written at the same place, Babylon, there are significant differences in tone, style, and grandeur of the creation myths. Another major difference between the Enuma Elish and the Bible goes to the credibility of the story. The Enuma Elish is internally inconsistent and goes against thousands of years of Sumerian myth and history. Even within the Enuma Elise, the writers contradict the internal workings of their own story. The Enuma Elise leaves out the original king of the earth, Enla, until the very end of the story, and then has Marduk steal Enla's titles and position. Marduk also receives Anuship, which is akin to kingship of heaven, but forgot to give Anu, whose powers the title derives from, kingship. These inconsistencies are not surprising if one looks past the Enuma Elise and looks at the history around Marduk. Marduk, who is a central character of the Enuma Elise, never held the position of King of the Earth in the entire history of Babylon before the Enuma Elish. In fact, the written reports of Marduk as a god in Babylonian history place him as a local god of royalty that would give King's message to Enla the true Mesopotamian king of the earth. This historic record is damning in the credibility of the Numa Elish and an issue that the Bible does not have. Did the Numa Elish influence the Bible? Does the credibility of the Numa Elish harm the truthfulness of the epic myth? Does the fact that the Bible was orally transmitted before being written down cause issues for the Bible? Does Marduk still exist today? Let me know in the comment section below, and for more Supernatural History TV, like and subscribe.